I'm going to go ahead and create a new document in Illustrator. And for this particular tech technical exercise five, you're only going to be turning in two images, one with um, an animal that you choose and pick out. Um, I'd advise you try something other than the capybara that I posted, but if you love capybaras, that's totally fine if you want to find another image of the, the capybara to work with. Um, and then in addition to the animal image, you'll be turning in uh, an image where you vectorize a drawing that you've made and turn it into a pattern. So I'll call this Contag Janae Tech X5. Um, live trace. Cool. And then I'll hit create and that should come up. Uh, one of the reasons why I like to teach how to utilize shapes before uh, talking about how to use the pen tools is because I want you guys to feel comfortable with and aware of the fact that you can actually use shapes to do quite a few different things, building up images. Um, I think a common thing that a lot of folks get confused with in Illustrator is <clears throat> the fact that as you're going through it, you know, you think the pen tool is going to give you the most freedom and flexibility when really it might be the, um, the pen or the, uh, the shape tool that allows you to do some really interesting things. So um, last class we did talk about the shape tool, the rectangle, um, you know, you have the options of utilizing the polygons, the stars, uh, some lines in there, and we talked about gradients, shape building, um, and a little bit about paths and anchor points, but today those tools are going to become even more important. So um, let's start out just by talking about the two different pen tools that we have here. One, which is your pen tool, you can hit P, is going to be your basic um, drawing tool. Now there's a couple of different ways you can utilize the regular pen tool. One is by just creating some lines, you know, and connecting them straight lines and obviously you can connect it and create your own shape. In my case I'm drawing a little lightning bolt here because that's fun. Um, but if you don't want that to connect and become a shape, which of course you can fill and add a stroke, um, if say I just wanted the line and maybe I wanted the look of the lightning bolt, what I can do, obviously like the pen tool is now kind of stuck, if I hit V, that's going to bring me back to my move tool and identify that as just the shape. So. Now I have this, and if I wanted to, I can go into my appearances panel um, and you know make that stroke a little bit more uh, robust. In fact, maybe I'll move my appearances over here so I can get to them a little bit more easily. So I can add that stroke just like that um, around that given lightning bolt, or I can go off of my shape and when I click on that, I can fill it with a more lightning bolt appropriate color. Um, again, my preferred method is grabbing it from the toolbar over here. Almost forgot. Cool. So I can make it blue. Um, I can keep that outline on there or, you know, make that stroke a slightly thicker weight. Um, if I want it to be a little bit more of a punchy graphic, and I can even make the color of that outline blue or something that meshes really nicely. So again, if you get stuck and you're like, uh, I have the pen tool, it's these straight lines, I can't get off of it, you can always hit the V button and that will kind of end the chaos and madness for you. Now with this straight line pen tool, there's another way that you can use it, um, which is to hold it down which is going to give you a tangent. Um, and you're going to notice here from, from that point, if I keep holding it down, I can sort of curve off to make, um, well, in my case, it looks like I'm kind of making this snowman type situation. But uh, so if I hold down from that anchor point, I can sort of 
curve this around to be, you know, whatever I end up creating. In this case, it's kind of a, a line mess, but. So this use of the pen tool, holding it down as you drag it, is definitely the more complex way to use it. And when people talk about, oh my God, Illustrator is so hard. It's so hard to control what you're doing. It's because holding down the pen tool like this does take quite a bit of practice and experience, just becoming aware of where those lines are going to hit. So I'm gonna hit the V button. I This is a very interesting abstract drawing, but I'm not super happy with it. In any case, that's your basic pen tool. Now, uh, if you want an easier way of drawing those curved lines, especially as you're getting started and you don't necessarily want to deal with all of the tangents of um, trying to figure them out with those handles and dragging your regular pen tool, I would recommend utilizing the curvature tool. And the curvature tool has a key command shortcut or keyboard shortcut of shift and then the little, uh, uh, apostrophe button so you're more than welcome to use that instead but if you look here aha now I'm getting something very similar but it's far more intuitive as I hold down these points as for where the curves are going to develop and you'll notice as I'm dragging all of these curves around to make my organic four-legged octopus or something, <laughs> you'll notice that I have not only a path where my stroke is, but I also have all of these little anchor points inside of that path which I can modify if I, if I need to. So I can pull that out, I can pull that out. If I want to expand how this given organic shape kind of looks, which gives me a lot of flexibility as far as, you know, really meshing something to the shape that I want. Um, the other thing is, if you notice, I just clicked on the path right here and dragged another anchor point which gives me that same flexibility. And what you'll no notice about um, these anchor points and about the pen tool is that it kind of operates modularly. Like if I pull this in, you're gonna notice it's affecting the, the same path on the outside. So it's something important, I think, to keep in mind. And then of course I can rotate that and now I've kind of created and designed my own uh, strange shape here uh, with the curvature tool. You might be asking, okay, well, what happens if I hold down the curvature pen tool? Well, I'll drop, I'll drop one here. It actually draws uh, a straight line. And then from there, I can modify that curve wherever I'd like, or I can hit the V button, and then it just leaves it like that. So depending on your level of comfortability, you can always start with the uh, curvature tool. And then if you want to make a dramatic jump from the curve to a straight line, I like to just hit P, which brings me back over. And then just like that, I can add a straight line to uh, that that curve. Uh, and then if I wanna switch back to the curvature tool, I can hit shift and then the little apostrophe button, hypothetically, shift, shift plus apostrophe button, come on. And pull that around. It's not quite working for me, but I can always come back uh, and continue a line from any of my given anchor points. So that gives you a lot of flexibility as far as building and creating custom shapes, uh, whether it's something like a lightning bolt graphic 
or uh, something that has a bit more uh, curvature to, to it. Um, there's another way that you can modify shapes, interestingly, uh, especially if you start off with something that's a bit more organic. Like I'll just draw a picture of a little snake or a worm or something that has quite a few different curvaceous elements to it. And a little head. Maybe that's a little too big. So again, I can pull in that anchor point and kind of modify how this little guy looks. You know, maybe this is a bit too lumpy. It's not quite as perfect as I would want. So I can constantly pull these anchor points around. Uh, and then since he's supposed to be a cute little snake, we'll make him green. And uh, I'll go ahead and keep the blue outline for now. So if I want to modify the shape of this uh, even with even more flexibility, what I can use is the Puppet Warp tool. The Puppet Warp tool is going to be located on this toolbar and it's going to look like a little uh, tack. Now if you don't see it, which will be the case with some of you guys depending on how big your screen is and kind of what your default is, for example, mine's not even showing it right now because I just updated my version of Illustrator. I can hit this dot, dot, dot at the bottom. It says Edit Toolbar. And I can go and add and find any other additional things that I might be missing. Uh, and you can see that there's a ton of different tools. And, you know, obviously we have limited time in our class, but um, hopefully you guys continue with Illustrator and experiment on your own to fully figure out what all of these different tools do. But I'm gonna start with the Puppet Warp tool because it's a really interesting way to create some interest here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that to my toolbar so I know I can come back to it at any given time. And you can do that with any of these tools uh, that you're looking for. Like there's a Shaper tool, there's a Smooth tool, uh, you know, different sizing tools. There are just so many different ways to modify images in Illustrator. So um, I turn on Puppet Warp and you notice that my um, snake now has all of these different anchor points. And I can add more of those, which essentially are gonna operate as joints in this organic image. So, so cool, right? You can kind of animate this guy to do exactly what you want and kind of pull him around. Now, uh, if I add one over here, I can move the head, but you're gonna notice it's always going to correspond to where I've added those different points. All of the joints are connected just like they would be in the body of a real live snake. But you can kind of see how much flexibility this gives you as far as modifying shapes and organic shapes, you know, you might be asking, okay, well, what does this look like with something that's more of a geometric shape like the lightning bolt here? Well, um, let's say I add a couple of joints in here. It already has a few, but you know, it's gonna add a tiny bit of curvature based on what those joints are kind of telling it but I can absolutely hit Command Z and go back, but I can absolutely modify that. What might be even more interesting is maybe if I add like um, a little sizzle around the lightning bolt like this. Let's see if I can come back around. My stroke I'm feeling like is definitely a little too big right now, so I'm probably gonna come back and adjust that as well. But what I would encourage you guys to do is really experiment with and get comfortable with the, the pen tools as you're working with this. Um, see, what I can do is actually eliminate the stroke here. Great, and then I'm gonna make the fill just a brighter 
whiter color so it stands apart and then maybe I'll even add the puppet warp tool to get this exactly where I want as if it was sort of like a you know like a video game asset that oops that falls down and it hits the ground and it's a big bolt of lightning that's kind of cool maybe I want to get rid of the stroke here too So now I have something that's starting to look like the beginning to a concept for some kind of a graphic. So um, that's the pen tool and what you can do to work with that and utilize that to create your own custom shapes and ideas, whether those are more organic shapes or geometric shapes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add another artboard so we can keep moving forward uh, because the next couple of things I want to show you are uh, a couple of interesting ways that you can illustrate based off of photos. Now obviously we're not trying to implement a lot of internet images or Google images into our work in general, but if you are appropriating something and you are vectorizing it and turning it into something that is very far, you know, modified from the original source, that's appropriation and that is totally okay. So on Google, I went ahead and looked for pictures of my favorite, one of my favorite animals, the capybara, which is a water rodent, and it's very kind, and in many pictures, you're, you'll see it with um, not baby capybaras, but with little friends like birds sitting on its head. And so I went and downloaded a picture of a capybara, and you could use one that has a background as well, but... Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and show you how to place that into your document and we're going to work off of the image that you've chosen of an animal and turn it into an illustration. So I'm going to go to File, Place. File, Place is how you get photographic images or JPEG images into Illustrator. Now I don't recommend working this way generally unless you're planning on turning one of those uh, pixel-based images into a vector. Um, I would much prefer or much more highly recommend that you deal with pixels and Photoshop and vectors and Illustrator. But if I go to File Place, I'll show you how we can get from uh, point A to point B here. On my desktop, I've created a folder um, with live trace demo images. And the capybara is demo image four. So I'll go ahead and hit place and then you can see him following my mouse around here. And now I have this capybara placed on my document. Now, I want him to be an illustration or a drawing as opposed to um, a JPEG. And you can see the image that I've picked isn't great quality. It's pretty small. So what I'm going to do is work on top of this in order to create an illustration that I want. So I'm first going to go into layers and immediately lock the layer where I posted my capybara. I don't want him to move anywhere as I'm drawing on top of him. And then I'll create a new layer. And this is going to be the layer where I draw my new original uh, Janae version of a capybara. So I'll grab my curvature tool and capybaras aren't this color. So I think I'm going to make the stroke We'll keep it simple and just make it black. And then I will grab my fill and I'll make it sort of this nice orange tan color, something maybe in that vicinity. And then you'll notice that picture isn't going to move as I start going around it. The one thing I do notice is that my stroke is really big, so it's hard to kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go over to my appearance side of things and take my stroke weight down to, I think, even 0.75 is a nice starting spot. And it remembers my fill color and everything, which is great. The other thing that I want to do so I can actually see the work that I'm doing 
is turn my opacity down. I want to be able to see behind my overlaid drawing so that I know that I'm going in the right direction. And so I, I turned that down to like 50%. Hopefully it follows through for me. It looks like it's still pretty solid. Let's see. If I go back over to my opacity here. There we go. Okay, cool. Now it's responding. Great. So I'll keep that at like 56%. And then I can make my outline using my curvature tool around my capybara. Now you're noticing right now like, hey, it doesn't look like it's making those modifications in the right spot. Oh, now it is. It kind of gets smart enough to figure out, oh, I see what you're doing. Great. I think I'll add in his back feet later here and might even make new shapes for his feet. But I'm just getting the idea across right now, going around the capybara as an outline with my lowered opacity fill. Kind of reminds me of, oops, command Z. Kind of reminds me of going around the hand when we were learning about the magnetic lasso tool because it is a little bit time consuming. But this translation is pretty impressive as far as creating our own graphical illustration of this animal. So some of you, if you're not as comfortable illustrating or making drawings of your own, but you want an illustration that looks somewhat good <laughs> of an animal or a person or a thing, this is a great way to get started um, as far as understanding how to use these kinds of tools in Illustrator to make that happen. And honestly, right now, what I'm basically creating is just a glorified shape around my capybara and I can increase my opacity now if I want to and see what that looks like. And I've definitely got the shape of a little rodent. Whether or not that's readable as a capybara or not, I don't know, but we're going somewhere. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do is uh, add another layer here so I can get the other feet in. So I'll lock layer two so I can continue working. And on my new layer, I can create what I need for the other feet that are sticking out. And I can always go back and modify my anchor points and kind of fine tune things eventually here. But one fun thing to try, especially if you're not super into animals, is try taking a selfie of yourself, <laughs> duh, um, and putting that into Illustrator and trying this process of um, creating an illustration of your own face, um, which is a great way of, you know, participating in the Tune Me Challenge or, you know, however you participate in social media. Cool, so I have the other legs and I did create them at full opacity here, which that's fine with me. Eventually the whole thing will be at full opacity. Uh, and then maybe what I can do is use my shapes to make a little eye. We'll fill that one in with uh, black and a little nose. And again, he's very creepy right now. Whenever you don't have that little white dot in the eye, just is a bit scary. So I can add that, scale this circle down. And now uh, I just need to make the 
illustration around the ear, but we are totally headed in the right direction. So if I go to layer two and click on my capybara and go to my appearance, I can bring my opacity back up. And yeah, I definitely feel the need to put that ear in there. It kind of looks like an earless rodent at the moment, but you know, we're, we're on to something. Um, <laughs> maybe what I'll do is go over to my layers. I'll hit layer three again and lock layer two back up now that I can really see what I'm working on. You can see how pixelated that starting image is. And I'll add a little, a little ear. I could use a shape or I could even draw it if I wanted to, but just trying to keep it simple for now. But you can imagine this gets fairly complicated or can be complicated if you um, move forward and you're really trying to get something that looks a bit more illustrated and realistic. And now I can also turn off layer one and I have a little capybara illustration that's a vector that I can make scalable as large or as small as I want. If I select all my layers here, I can hold down my shift key and I have this uh, wonderful scalable little creature, which is pretty awesome. Um, and my source photo is sitting on layer one, so I can turn it off and on and move forward from there. Great. So that's using the pen tool to create an illustration from something. But there are other really useful features in Illustrator. Um, and if you haven't already gotten your notepad out or your notebook because you're like, ooh, capybaras, which I would totally understand, uh, you might wanna grab a notebook for this next part because there are a few more complicated steps that you might want to take note of. So I'm gonna go into my um, artboards. Where did they go? Here they are. Uh, I'm gonna add another artboard here to show you um, what we're gonna be working with. And what I've done is created a, a couple of drawings of ginkgo leaves. And hopefully you've made a drawing not too complicated, kind of simple, um, just with a black pen, uh, something that you can work with pretty easily. Um, that's, you know, even mine, I'm worried that it might be a little bit too complicated. So we, we shall see. Ginkgo. Nope, demo image is color. I need to go to my desktop. And I'm gonna actually open this inside of Photoshop first because there's a few things that I might wanna modify, especially if I don't have a scanner and um, I've taken just a basic picture on my iPhone. Generally speaking, um, what we're looking for in this next step, because we're gonna transform this into a vector, like straight up, which is gonna be super cool and make it part of a pattern. This is um, a ginkgo leaf that I drew this morning. You can see my process here as I was like drinking coffee and figuring things out for the day and trying to, you know, get my life together. Um, but I took a picture of it on my iPhone and I know that I, even though I put it in good light, it's still a little bit dark and the quality is not that great. Luckily, we have Photoshop so what we can do is adjust a few of those things as far as just basic photo editing to get this to a point where we can utilize it in Illustrator without any issue. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is make this a little bit more graphical in Photoshop by pulling up my curves layer. Just a tad. I don't want to lose my deep rich blacks. So I'm actually going to pull in this guy over here, you see how that kind of punches through the contrast and pulls my black point in. It's truly magic what you can do pushing pixels around. Um, and then the other thing I'm noticing is it's a little bit brighter up here than it is down here. So if I want to be um, especially intense about it, I might add another curves layer where I pull it up just a tiny bit again but this time I'm gonna add a gradient to that curves layer so that it only affects 
here we go, the bottom. Um, so I pulled that line over and now I've really evened out my quality of light. And I don't have that annoying, you know, bottom left corner where the light started to fall off when I was taking pictures of this in my kitchen. So uh, something, you know, very, very simple, but now you know how to utilize some of these layers in Photoshop. So hopefully that's helpful. The other thing I might do, if I do have a black uh, line drawing, I might take down my hue and saturation, specifically saturation because I want it to be a purely black and white image. So if I take down saturation, I should be able to eliminate any yellows that are hanging out or any blues or tints that the iPhone takes. So if I want that pure black and white. If your picture that you uh, took a picture of is in color, don't worry about this part. Um, should be totally, totally fine. But I think using something simple and graphical, like a simple drawing, is um, a nice way to do this. So I'm going to save this as uh, an edited version of itself because I know that I've made all of these changes. So I just went to File, Save As, and I'll call it Janae, and then Edited. And I'm just going to save it as a Photoshop file, and then I'll save it as a JPEG here in a second as well. File, save as. In the same folder, I'll just make sure I'm saving it as a JPEG in Photoshop. And I definitely want my quality at 12 or maximum. Sweet. And now my image is definitely improved from where it was when I initially photographed it. This is just another way to apply some of the skills you guys have hopefully already gained in Photoshop thus far in our quarter together. Whoops. Um, so let me click on Illustrator here and we'll zoom in a bit. I'm going to go to File, Place, just like before. And I'm going to find that edited JPEG that I created. And I'm going to place it. Woo, that is huge. That is very big, even though it is but a mere iPhone photo. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and scale it down so it's, you know, the size of my document instead. Now it's a little bit more manageable, but oops, that's going to work. So I have this nice ginkgo image. I'm ready to turn it into a graphic. So this is the part where you definitely want to make sure you're taking notes. Watch this first and then try it on your own if you'd like, uh, just because there's going to be a couple of different steps to this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on that image, make sure it's selected, and I'm going to go up to Window and click on Image Trace. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to pick a preset and Generally speaking, low fidelity photo is going to give you the best, less, less chalky results, but high fidelity photo works as well. There's all of these different results that you can experiment with on your own if you want to see what they all do. But in general, I recommend the high fidelity photo and low fidelity photo settings because they're the most simple and it's not going to look like, you know, your iPhone app that turns a picture of you into bad sketchy art. And these ones honestly like are not even as great of presets as some of those iPhone or smartphone apps. So I don't really back them up uh, super intensely. So let's try low fidelity photo and you're gonna see what happens here. I'll hit okay. And it's going to um, essentially find all of the different areas of dark and shadow and it's going to turn it into a vectored image. Um, and even with a, a larger you know iPhone photo or something it could take a while based on uh, what you're using whether it's a sketch or it's an actual photograph of yourself or of something um, 
just something to be aware of. Wow, very nice. So now I have a almost vectorized version, but you can see if I zoom in, it has turned all of my, what were like little pen strokes, and I can show you the comparative difference here. You know, this is what my pen looks like as it soaks into the paper. It has really simplified a lot of those pen marks and lines Oops. in Illustrator, which is awesome. But I still have this background and potentially some other things that I would want to change or adjust here. So if I go to um, Object, Image Trace, this is the part to remember to write down in order to get it to do this. Oops, I definitely have to be selected on my image in order for this to work. <laughs> Object, Image Trace, Expand. It's going to show me a breakdown of all of the different paths and lines and anchor points that it's generated for this image, which is so cool. If I click on it with my regular selection tool, it's going to highlight everything and I can move that image around as a single thing. But odds are you're probably going to want to edit or remove things or change things or take out little white spaces. And to do that, what you actually need is the direct selection tool or you can hit A on your keyboard to get there. And that's the little white arrow chilling out up here. So if I grab the direct selection tool, you can see the complexity of the number of anchor points and everything that it's positioned within this image. It's quite a bit, which is so cool. If I click off of it, and I want to get rid of just the background because I have this white area around the image. Luckily, it all came out the same color because I really focused on modifying how it looked in Photoshop so that it would kind of read that as one flat white layer. If I click on that with my direct selection tool and then just simply hit the delete button, I can remove that whole background. Uh, similarly, if I wanted to get rid of all of the little white spaces inside of my ginkgo leaf, I could technically go through and isolate those and eliminate them or change them. Or, you know, if I want this to be pure white instead of the slightly off-white color, if I click on that, I can pull that up to pure white and fill it in. For example, uh, I can click on any of these and turn them a given color or just white, which is also totally fine. And all of a sudden I have this really cool ginkgo leaf graphic that I can use to make a pattern or put on uh, a dress that I'm trying to design or whatever that might be. Um, and it's all modifiable and made out of paths. Now, if I click on one and get really close, you know, you can see these paths exist. They're quite complex. Oops. Um, but you now have that opportunity to modify things. Now, let's, uh, if I wanted to click this whole thing, for example, I could try to change the color of it all to blue if I wanted you know it all to be filled in I realize now that my image is pretty intense as far as um, you know having a lot of different white spaces so this would actually take me quite a bit of time to go through here and like change all of those little spaces to green but what's useful about having this as a vector image if I grab my regular selection tool, if I hold down the shift key, I now have a drawing that is uh, infinitely scalable. Uh, if I hold down the shift key, can maintain that aspect ratio. 
as opposed to a drawing which is photographed and thus you know pixelated so there's not as much you can do uh, well, let's do another one so that you can get an even better idea of um, what this can do so I'll make another artboard and uh, for this one I will grab my let's grab my more simple image of yeah I'll just grab this little palm tree here file uh, oops illustrator file place demo image 2 Um, now this is a scan, so um, it has been scanned pretty evenly. I'm not as worried as far as um, Photoshop modifications and whatnot, but the images here are a little bit more simplistic to use. So let's try doing the image trace over here. We'll do low fidelity photo. It's always going to ask you if you want to rasterize, which you can totally do by going to object, rasterize up at the top. But I've noticed that with Illustrator, even if you do rasterize the image, it still asks you if you want to rasterize it again. So I'll typically say no. Um, or I'll say, okay, let's just proceed anyway, even though it takes a bit of time. So that's going to do that same process that we just went through with my very detailed uh, ginkgo leaf. But maybe these other more simple ones will give us the opportunity to fill in some of the gaps. Cool, so now that's been uh, vectorized. If I zoom in, I can kind of tell the difference here, which is nice. So I'll go into object, image trace, expand, grab my direct selection tool. I'm gonna just click off of it, click back onto it and eliminate that background. Cool, I also noticed my pen didn't quite touch here. So I actually don't have a shape inside of this leaf. But if I want to, with any of these other leaves, I can go through and give them a nice dark green color and really start to, you know, illustrate those. Now, if you want the same dark green color, oops, throughout, what you can do is utilize your eyedropper tool uh, to It's not going to work for me here. Uh, in order to create uh, the exact same leaf color. So what you can do is you can toggle between the eyedropper tool, which is I, and then the selection tool, which is B. So I'll go to the B button. Oops. Excuse me. The A direct selection tool excuse me, uh, and then I'll hit I, and I can apply that same color. So I'll go back to A, click here, and then I'll hit I on the keyboard, keyboard shortcut, and grab the color up here. Go back to A, and then go to I, just like that. And you might be asking, okay, well, what are you gonna do about this one? Well, hypothetically, I should be able to merge that path if I am using my direct selection tool. So I'll go back to A. And I'm going to zoom in here. Hopefully resolve that issue. Maybe zoomed in too much. So if I notice, okay, well, I definitely have something that's missing here. An easy way to solve this, which is something you guys already know, is grabbing the ellipse tool. I'll make a little circle that is the 
same color here. So I'll hit the eyedropper tool. There we go. And then I can make it a little bit smaller. And then I will rotate it just to fill in that gap. And you're all thinking, oh my goodness, I have to make sure my drawings are perfect so I don't have to go through and do this every time. Well, you're not gonna notice this from a far distance, but it's gonna help solve some problems here shortly. Uh, and then I wanna make sure this is all selected and then I can grab my Shape Builder tool and merge that little leaf and merge this leaf so now it's its own thing. Obviously, I don't want it to be that color, so I'll hit A while it's selected and then hit I. Whoops, that was the whole thing being selected. So let's, we gotta click off this guy. Selected, hit I for the eyedropper, and there we go. I fixed it. So we could go through and adjust that for all of this, but again, this could be a really beautiful little graphic or pattern on a garment or, you know, what have you. But Illustrator is a great resource if you like illustrating or drawing your own creatures or your own uh, superheroes, your own patterns, graphics. There's a lot of opportunity here. So that is really, really the point of showing you guys a few of these tools. There's two more things I wanna do before I let you get to work on your own images in Illustrator. So I'm gonna add one more artboard and I'm going to place that last demo image um, and show you one that's a bit more complex. Uh, so I'll hit demo image one. My apologies for going slightly out of order with the demo images. My demos are somewhat rehearsed, but also a little bit off the cuff. Cool, so I just added this other demo image here and I'm gonna go ahead and do a low fidelity photo trace. If you do want to experiment with this, like a technical drawing, for example, you can. The reason I'm not gonna go through all of these is just because it takes a long time and like you can see right here, they don't always work out. So I'll stick to the low fidelity photo, hit okay. And this one's definitely a bit more complex. I didn't edit it in Photoshop. There's a few things going on here. And you'll notice if your background is uneven, you're gonna have, um, you know, if it's a drawing or a photo or something, you're gonna have these little artifacty areas um, and you can get rid of them to some extent. So that's what I kind of want to show you in this uh, last version of your image trace. So if I go to object, image trace, expand, at this point we've done this three times and hopefully you're getting the hang of all of the different steps involved. Um, I am going to hit A to grab my direct selection tool and then I'll select out these little regions just like that and delete them that need to go and then I can clean up some of those other spaces using my direct selection tool as well. But you'll quickly realize that the more simple of an image or drawing that you're using in this process, the less work on the back end you'll have to do in order to clean it up and get rid of all of these other spots and issues that might come up. So. That's one of the things of, you know, the more you do this, the more for foresight you'll have into kind of having an understanding of how to prep your images. So I can go through here and eliminate all of those areas, but this is absolutely a tedious process. some of which can be avoided by doing some of that prep work in Photoshop prior to bringing something in.
So I'm not going to go through all of those steps, but you can kind of see how now we have all of these different component pieces. You know, if I wanted to separate the group, almost there. I could just select out part of them and then grab my regular selection tool or V and pull them away. If I don't make a super clean selection, um, I will end up sort of stretching some different things, which can be kind of a cool effect if you want to experiment with sort of illustrator artifacting and whatnot. But grab my a button here yeah this image you know depending on where you stretch it or pull it will sort of start to break down but if my you know if my drawing that I'm starting with is a bit cleaner and I want to do this like for example maybe just take this palm tree and pull it away oops Let's grab my regular selection tool or V. Nope, still bringing everything. Grab my A for direct selection. Let's see if we can even just get this little ginkgo. There we go. For some reason, it is not selecting out everything. Maybe I can grab this one. So one thing that might be worth doing if you do run into this issue, there we go, I got this guy out of the way, um, is bring them into Photoshop and then separate them out. So each of them is their own layer or their own document or you kind of make those selections and then you pull them in so you don't have multiple sketches on the same document. Here we go almost gotten it but not quite it keeps pulling some of the the palm tree so I would probably in a different take of this separate them out but by holding down the shift key hypothetically I can select the points that I want to work with so now nope if I hold down the shift key, I should be able to work additively here, but yeah, this is causing a couple of unwanted issues. So maybe if I pull these two away, nope. So yeah, I, in the future, I would absolutely separate these guys out. So um, the final thing that I wanted to show you uh, is how do you make a pattern utilizing uh, your own drawing or your own imagery. Well, let's say we wanted to start with the ginkgo leaf over here because it is separated out and workable and functionable. It will be great. I will hold down the option key so that I can get a direct replica of that over here and then zoom in on it a bit. I'll uh, hold down the shift key while I size it down. now I have this kind of three-dimensional looking size down vector graphic very nice that I can use to create a pattern so let's say I select it object pattern make okay um, I can experiment with how exactly I want this to be laid out. Um, by sort of experimenting with some of these different restrictions, I might make the height a bit more. The width a bit more. So that they're a bit more separated. pretty cool. 
And then, um, hmm. that will allow me to create my new ginkgo pattern. that I can use to fill in anything because that is officially a swatch option. So that's gonna live inside of my Illustrator swatches now in a very useful way. So when I'm in this pattern window, if you're like, wait, why can't I click on anything? Just hit this little arrow and we get back from the pattern editing window. And now I'm back to where I was. But let's say I have a new document and I'm working on, um, you know, let's see. Let's do a, a larger print document, like a, yeah, like a magazine sort of scale thing. We're thinking very editorial. Uh, say skirt mock-up, for example, but this could be, you know, anything. And I will grab my pen tool. Let's move. I'm actually going to move this out of the way here so I can really see what I'm doing. And then I'll switch over to my curvature tool. Kind of making this up as I go. Hit the P button for pen, just so I can connect those. I have this little, you know, skirt mock-up or whatever. What I can do then is go into my swatches oops <laughs> color swatches and I'm not seeing anything in this one per se so let's go find my um, here we go Hmm, it looks like it did not save my swatch over here. So let's see what's going on. But it did save it over here. Okay. Interesting. Usually it does remember in, uh, maybe I need to save this. Let's do that. Save it. It's cool. Well, let's take this, copy it, and we'll paste it over here just so that we have a better idea. And I'll go ahead and scale it down. I want it to work big. I do know there's a way to access the swatches that you've made when you open up a new document. I'm not 100% sure why it wasn't working for me this time, to be 100% honest. Um, <laughs> but... I will look into that and let you guys know because that is a new one for me. So we go back. And now I've lost my swatches panel. because I keep clicking on color. <laughs> but 
I can technically add that as a pattern within any given object or or thing to fill it in, which is pretty cool. So that is the demo on utilizing your image trace, uh, turning a photographic image into a vector image. Remember, you can always take these graphics and then uh, export them so that they can go into Photoshop or open your Illustrator file directly if you want. Um, by going into Photoshop, file open, and then if I find my technical exercise here, find that. I can open it in Photoshop if I did want to bring in any of these component pieces to a future project, for example. I click number three, should be a nice object with a transparent background so that if I do want to add this graphic to another project, I'm totally able to do that and it doesn't even have anything behind it. So that is super helpful. So the thing you want to do for your technical exercise is just you'll be working on and turning two things in. I'd like to see you create your own illustration of an animal. You can use a source photo from the interwebs, from Google, wherever you'd like to grab that from. And then the other thing I'd like to see you guys make is uh, a drawing, a quick drawing that you sketch doesn't have to be the greatest work of art ever, but I'd like to see you turn that into a vectorized version of itself and um, show me that image, show me that image inside of a pattern like what I just made over here. It doesn't have to be a dress, it could literally be a square with the pattern inside of it um, to show that you know there's some good takeaways here from uh, this image trace and um, pen tool demo from today. So I hope you guys find these tools useful as you're working on your playlist on vinyl project and your future projects. And we have one more comprehensive demo in Illustrator as we look at designing typography. So stay tuned and good luck working on this one. Thanks everyone.